What's going on, everybody? It's another great day living the Brett way. And today we're going to find out if NFTs are a scam. Let's get into it. Guys, hello. Today is a very special day because I'm with someone who I've followed for a long time and I have a lot of respect for. And he's entered the NFT space recently. I've been watching his videos for probably the last three or four years. And to see his perspective has been quite interesting to say the least. He's someone who's absolutely dominated in the Web2 space, especially on the agency side, and who I've literally watched become one of the most elite entrepreneurs, especially for his age, since he was a young lad at 16 years old. So today I have Iman Gaji. He's a 3X Board Ape Yacht Club owner, and he has a pretty controversial take on NFTs if you compare it to how I view things. And so I watched his hour-long Q&A about how he kind of used the NFT space and what his project is doing. And we had a lot in common, and we do think very similarly on most things but there's a few that there was very different opinions and so luckily today we get to dive deep go in for about an hour and just kind of see each side of this uh these opinions so iman thanks for coming Man. my guy i'm excited <laughs> this is really cool for me to meet you finally i enjoy london it's different is that why you said that? It's, it's different it's cold in london yeah <laughs> it's cold and cloudy i'm used to hot and sunny in arizona so. <laughs> Fair enough. but my friend this is gonna be i, I want to just go straight into it and I want to go to the, the number one thing that we talked about uh, or that I kind of thought about when I was watching that video of yours. And it was basically how you don't really like, uh, not like Web3 culture, but you have a different no, perspective. I, don't. Yeah, yeah, I mean, we straight don't up be now. around the bush. I, I don't. Okay. Yeah. Why not? What, what appeals like? It's extremely toxic. It's uh, almost a bit like, yeah, it's, 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 a, it's a very, very odd space. I mean, just even statements like founders shouldn't make money. Mm-hmm. Uh, this whole idea that it's, I said, it's very like virtuous, but then it's like, let, why are people like, why are people in the NFT space right now to make money? Right. Or at least as it currently stands, as I said, like, I think to me, like NFT, as I said, is like having a website in 1998. Mm. You're not a website company. You're a company that serves a function and you have a website that's a component to your business. You are not a NFT company. You are, what do you do? Like, what does your company do? And you have an NFT component to it as either a pricing strategy or a gatekeeping strategy or potentially both. So like, I don't know, like I've just met the, some of the weirdest, look, I've, I've been in business a long time, right? I've seen some weird, weird, weird industries. It's potentially one of the weirdest I've seen. It's just such a new market. And the only way that I can kind of explain this from my perspective, because I love Web3 culture, mm. I think it's beautiful. And that's what really appealed to me is that when I entered the NFT space, everyone was so welcoming mm. and it felt really authentic. And people were excited because, I mean, there was less than 100,000 wallets. Like no one knew what this technology was. So the, the fact that you could find like another nerd on the Internet that was mm. into this stuff was like amazing. And that's where we got the wag me, the, the friend, like all these like kind of like cringy terms that you see in the NFT space. Uh, that's where they came from. But I do agree like there's this term going around called toxic positivity yeah. and as we've hit that million wallet mark we see a lot more people probably of my fault for my youtube videos all saying the next 10x nfts <laughs> people coming in that's their only interpretation of the technology mm. and so it's kind of like people saw that going on with the ogs and then just kind of adapted that but they all came in with the exact intention that you said mm. everybody was there to make money even the ogs mm. but at the same time i just feel like it's been skewed and then kind of manipulated by people coming in for these like these rug pull projects mm. and so i have seen the culture shift but i just think that the anonymity side like how like bitcoin was founded by an anonymous founder like how that's part of our culture I do think that's, and then actually just putting digital ownership into the hands of the consumer. When mm -hmm. we're so used to like record labels taking advantage of their artists or pretty much any company being able to just sell something uh, for free and then using their consumers as the product. That's the side that I like. And mm -hmm. so, but I agree with you 100%. There is not going to be an NFT market or an NFT space. It's mm -hmm. just every business is going to have NFTs. So, I mean, you're an entrepreneur. How do you feel like NFTs will affect your businesses? I think for me, it's... It I see probably the closest link with NFTs uh, as a pricing and gatekeeping model and some of my other businesses. So like th there's businesses where having NFT as the pricing model and the gatekeeping um, uh, side of things, it makes sense. And mm -hmm. some that doesn't like, for example, my software company, you pay a monthly subscription, right? Mm -hmm. It's software as sold as a service. Uh, and for that, it would not make sense to have, no. you know, a, a, a NFT as the way that you actually get mm -hmm. in, right? So that business doesn't make sense. At my agency, it doesn't make sense because we're working with, you know, uh, high ticket clients uh, and it's a monthly service that's delivered. One that makes total sense is my education company, right? And in five years, anything on the education side of things that I do will be released as an NFT, 
because to me it is a product and you know the easiest way to understand this is and you know for everyone you know don't don't assume that this is actually gonna happen but <laughs> you know over the space of the last uh four years or three and a half years or whatever at my education company we've done over 10 million dollars in revenue i've kept whatever maybe 25 percent, 30 percent of that right we built schools in nepal i have a very big team and there's a lot that goes into it but at the end of the day i technically have the infinite printing money machine right mm -hmm. like next month if we were to sell you know let's say uh you know our low ticket program fifteen hundred dollars if we were to sell a thousand of those i've just made 1.5 million dollars and i can do it the month after and i can do it the mm -hmm. month after and i can do it the month after and the the reason that people buy the programs is because for fifteen hundred dollars you're going to get hundreds and hundreds of thousands of dollars and even millions of dollars of value uh if you apply it and you build up your business etc mm -hmm. etc right and then if you look at the uh you know the other side of things which is our high ticket program once again sixty five hundred dollars we you know that's application only we literally only let existing agency owners in there mm -hmm. they're trying to scale up and get to levels that i got to with my agency so people pay those that money very very happily right but what will be even cooler is as i said i have the infinite uh, you know uh, money printing machine i can create as many of these copies as i want especially because they're digital what will be even cooler is if someone got that they applied the knowledge like i'll give you a perfect example you know very easy one to understand uh, the co-founder of my nft project mm -hmm. right he purchased my program, you know, uh, basically how we became friends. He purchased my program. He saw that I was going to Cape Town. Uh, his background was in photo video. He was like, hey, let me shoot for you. Um, you know, we ended up shooting together. Uh, once that was done, he built up his agency using the law, knowledge from the course. I said, just, I won't say the specifics of, you know, uh, of it, but, you know, he makes hundreds of thousands of dollars mm -hmm. a year now, right? So his initial investment of, you know, back then it was a thousand dollars has now led to a business that does hundreds of thousands of dollars a year in profit, right? So like, you know, of course, that's a, mm -hmm. a, you know, a crazy return. But what would be even cooler is if there was only a limited supply of those copies. Because here's the thing, you know, Pete now got what he wanted from the product. So the product is sat there idle. It's not, it's not doing anything. Mm -hmm. But if he could then go ahead and sell that on, and because people know the caliber of the program is so good, where for that reason, it's being sold for over what he paid for, then you have an actual asset, right? So that's one perfect example right there. Another perfect example is... You know, uh, when I used to live in London and, you know, even in Dubai, I'm part of different members clubs and stuff like that. When I leave the members club, you know, there was the gym that I went to was $12,000 a year, right? A gym? Yeah. <laughs> uh, oh my God. And, and I know that sounds preposterous, but, you know, I'm, you know, in the... In the I have $30,000 NFTs that yeah, don't the, get me right. as much of it. Utility <laughs> as a gym, so I get it. Right. Uh, and I'm in there with billionaires and hedge fund managers and, you know, of very course. successful entrepreneurs. So for me, it was, it was worth very it. Very well worth network, it, yeah. Right. Um, the thing is, I was a member there for a year. Obviously, as I said, I ended up moving out of London, but I would have stayed there for 10 years. So I would have paid $120,000 to the establishment. And the establishment can only let a certain amount of people in because mm -hmm. there's certain businesses, like for example, let's say with our high ticket program, mm -hmm. um, with that, there's, there's a lot of like actual time, yeah. time and manual involvement mm -hmm. from my team as well as me. So we actually limit the amount of people that we allow in there. Have to. Right? Whereas the lower ticket one, it's really, you know, it's that can infinitely scale. Now, in a business where there's only a certain amount of spots, and especially a place like a private members club, where I said they literally have capacity, capacity for only a certain yeah. amount of people. When I left, I stopped paying $12,000 a year, but the next person mm -hmm. just rolled right in, mm -hmm. right? My spot wasn't an asset. And I think that's the coolest thing is when your spot is an asset. You know, there's, I've been part of business masterminds that are $40,000 a year. And there's one that I recently just stopped, uh, you know, I stopped my uh, membership to because... You know, I always call it the most expensive audiobook on earth because, <laughs> you know, I never attend, you know, maybe every four or five months, I'll just mm -hmm. listen in on some of the events, uh, like the recordings and stuff like that. So that's $160,000 I spent. They have space for a hundred members. Once again, when I leave, I don't, that's, I'm $160,000 yep. down the hole, which is totally fine for me because I'm getting much more uh, than what I paid for in terms of like value and what I learned, but it would be even cooler if my space was an asset and then I could sell it on and if the business owner, because then the incentives are aligned as well, if the business owner is doing so well and is providing so much value to those holders and to its members, then uh, the demand is so much higher than the supply. So imagine a scenario where I'm paying, as I said, I paid $160,000 to be a member for four years. Obviously, if it was an NFT, it wouldn't be mm -hmm. multiple payments, but you know, just hypothetically, let's pay, let's say I just paid up, you know, 150 upfront for the mm -hmm. NFT. I got my four years of value. Maybe the value I got from it was a million dollars. You know, in terms of what I did for my business and whatnot, and then I was able to then 
sell the NFT on or my space because there's only 100 spaces in there for $500,000. Like to me, that's just the coolest thing ever. And it's and it's putting the power back. And as I said, there's certain products or there's certain businesses where I will never do. I will never do this on my software company because it just does not make sense. Of course not. Right? But especially with members clubs, with uh, products, like to me, it's just the right thing to do. 100%. Right? And, you know, that's why I get excited about it. And there's other industries where I don't understand the industry well enough to understand the use case for it. Um, I think, for example, art is a very, you know, easy one to understand where it's like you sell the art, but then the people then go ahead and mm -hmm. sell it on. You actually get a percentage of royalties. I think that's a very, like, very clear cut use case for NFTs. Um, so, yeah, for me, I looked at it and, you know, <laughs> as I've kind of told you a few times, like, I had people all the way from June, July, obviously, because I'm a very big audience, mm -hmm. uh, and not only a very big audience, very, very wealthy audience, or very cult-like audience, as you yeah, know. Very clear. Um, I had people coming to me and being like, hey, launch this picture profile project. I'll do everything for you. It'll be the easiest five, six million dollars of your life. For me, at my stage right now, like five, six million doesn't really do anything for me. Uh, and more importantly, I know for a fact I'm you know, on trajectory to hit the, the big billion. Mm -hmm. And I've been... You know, even when you first came here and you said that with me, um, you were like, dude, everything you've ever done, you know, everything from your agency to your e-learning platform, to your software company, to, you know, even just my clothing line, mm -hmm. right? Like it's all done to a very, very high standard. And that's very, very important to me. Um, so as I'm starting to see this whole NFT world come about, I'm like, I see it. I see the use case for it. I just don't know how I'm going to deploy it. Mm -hmm. Right. And I always knew, as, as I said, especially at my e-learning platform, um, that's going to be our model in, mm -hmm. in two to three years, a hundred percent. Um, so yeah, that was kind of like my first little soiree into the world. The education side. I mean, it's in your bio on Twitter. I think yeah. that's where we align the most and yeah. that's why we've got along so well because we both see that vision. I mean, that's what we're doing at the NFT Academy right now. And so it just makes more sense. But one thing that has to be made clear is it's probably not better for your bottom line. Because mm -hmm. like you said, you have an infinite money printing machine right now. You can mm -hmm. sell thousands of these for $1,500 mm -hmm. and there's no stop. Mm -hmm. So why would you cut the supply from like the typical web to business mind? And so this is where that like that conception of how come or NFT project founders aren't supposed to make money. Like mm -hmm. that's like kind of the whole point of the culture mm -hmm. is that we're tired of like web to businesses, like squeezing every dollar out mm -hmm. of their consumer, charging them and then selling their data, all of that. And then it's just, they're not really thinking about the consumer. Sure, they're making a good product and providing value. So I see both sides. Mm. But Web3, the whole point is that you actually give the ownership to your consumer. And then they can go on. And if you make a good product, can benefit from both sides. Get the mm. information and then sell it. Just like your vision. And so I just think it's because if you're a project founder, you these people are investing in you. And if they... Like it's not like equity in a company, like a normal stock or anything. But at the same time, if you're taking that money, then you're going to go buy Lambos. You're just like flexing on the people who put you in this position. And so it just doesn't come off as, I don't know, as like, I don't know, ethical, if that makes sense. And so for me, I think the big culture of like, oh, founders shouldn't make money. It's because the current, it's because the founders don't have any money. Mm -hmm. Of course. Like it's so, so easy so I, right I, now. So I understand it, right? In the same way, if you are invest, it's the exact same thing. If you're uh, an investor, and you've just put $15 million into a company. And now the founder mm -hmm. is taking that money out and blowing exactly. it. That is disrespectful to the investors. 100%. Disrespectful to the team. Right? So I understand it. I guess I understand it. But then as I said, I also, you just need to decipher between different founders. Like I've had 100%. people tell me like, oh, what are you going to do with the money? And it's like, well, all of the royalties or vast, vast majority uh, are going back into the project. That's that's our fuel. Mm -hmm. Where's the initial money going? You know, uh, as I said, I've got some costs, but most of it is going into my pocket. And But you, just, I have one side note, just because you're you're a proven founder at this point. And yeah. it's like you have time and time again taken money from a business, reinvested it, and provided value in different ways to your holders. Hmm. So you're allowed to make money in that sense. No, but, but also for me, it's like, why am I not... What, <laughs> like, <laughs> they expect like, like your like, public like, company like, or like, something. Like, look, I, I made $10 million mm -hmm. last year. Mm -hmm what i'm 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 gonna start a project make no look, where's my incentive right i need an incentive to do 100 percent. my co-founder needs an incentive to drop his agency that's doing hundred thousands of dollars a year and focus full time on this so i think incentives are very very important so i can understand the only reason anyone does anything exactly you have to have an incentive right and financially i mean 10 million dollars what's another two what's another three it's not as big of a deal 
So incentive is key, financial for sure. And I mean, you're in a, this position because, I mean, I, I don't know if the word sacrifice is right, but you've put a ton of time into educating yourself. You've invested tens, hundreds of thousands of dollars in masterminds. I remember seeing it, you, you at Sam Evans mastermind, like in the recorded videos, I'm like, wow, this kid's like on it and you're focused on the right things. And that's what got you to this position. And so you do need to be incentivized to continue to help people in a sense, like mm-hmm. making the products you do genuinely helps people just like Pete. You sold him a what fifteen hundred dollar program, and and from that alone, he's made hundreds of thousands of dollars in growth in his company. And mm. so, why should you continue doing that? I mean, most people would make ten million dollars at twenty two and just go on a yacht for the rest of their life. Like you could retire essentially based on your investments and whatnot. And so, what is going to make Iman Gaji like go out of his way and spend like the next two three weeks in a cave, working his ass off? It's more than two three weeks. Yeah, exactly. That, <laughs> exactly. No, so yeah, it, it is that. And the other thing is, it's like. You, I guess you kind of, you get what you pay for, right? It's like, well, yeah, I'm, the, as, as you said, the incentives need to be there in place or you can get a founder who's like, oh, I'll do this for free. Okay, you're probably not going to get a very good quality product. Like, you know, you need you need someone with a proven track record. And I think, you know, it's good to see. I think that's the way that the market is going. Mm-hmm. Like fully dox founders with a track record. Because mm-hmm. in the same way, people do need to understand that you are, it's almost as if you are a, a partial sh- a shareholder and quite frankly, you know, you buy the thing, you get the benefit, but then also you actually have an asset. So, you know, you got to do your research, right? In the same way, you know, if you're investing a large amount of money into a stock or let's say, you know, you're a private investor, you got to do a lot of research on the founder. And I, quite frankly, would never trust a founder that doesn't have a track record. Like for me, it's insane. And, you know, why are we having so many issues with people in NFT? Okay, well, look, let's look at the music industry. Why do we have so many issues with artists that make a, you know, uh, they get an advance, which they don't even understand what an advance mm-hmm. actually is. Almost like the NFT industry, they don't actually understand that lump sum that you got, unless you set up your tokenomics correctly, where the royalties are going to pay for everything. You got to reinvest that back into the company, right? So it, I think that's why we have such a weird dynamic where it's reverse capitalism, where you get paid before you do anything. And the founders have never seen millions in their life. Mm-hmm. Like the thing is, the founders have never seen millions in their life. This is their first chance to go and buy, you know, a, a Rolex or go and buy a Lambo or go and buy all this stuff. And they have no incentive to then deliver. They got their big payday, right? So unless they have a big reputation at stake, which is what, once again, for me, I think why you look at, you know, uh, Alex Becker's project, uh, you know, whatever you, whatever you actually think of it, <laughs> why you look at Alex Becker's project, why you look at um, Gary Vee's project, why you look at Kevin Rose's project, who was actually a client of mine at the agency. It was back, just crazy, by the Back way. in 2018. Yeah. Um, and you look at these guys, look, they make tens of millions a year, right? Like, you know, they will never, ever, ever risk their reputation for a project, especially, you know, the big thing for me that, that's so interesting with NFTs is it's like, it's so... And, you know, you asked earlier, why would I move great agency, uh, my education, mm-hmm. my e-learning platform? Why am I going to move to exclusively NFTs? Because I know for a fact that whatever we mint at, the floor price will be 10x. And for me, I'll end up making more money because from the royalties, because people will get it and they will, right, in the exact same way, you know, I'm a big fan of watches. Every time I buy a watch from Patek, I can walk across the street and sell it for an extra $150,000. Why? because the product is so good, the demand is so high. So that only works, you know, now if you're going to, you know, if you're going to Hublot, you can't do that same mm-hmm. thing. You're gonna walk across, across the street and you're gonna sell for less money because the demand isn't there. The, 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 the level of product and the quality of product isn't the same as a Patek, right? So for me, the reason I'm confident, uh, you know, cause it's, it's very scary, right? You've got, a, you've got a actual number assigned to the quality of your product. The floor right. price. The floor price, mm-hmm. right? You've, you've got an actual tangible number that the market looks at and goes, okay, this is what the market has decided it's worth. And, and, if, it, and if you're very confident, like I am, because as I said, I've been in business for six years and this is what I've done for the past six years in multiple uh, verticals. The reason I would do it is because for me, I know the floor price is going to be astronomical and I know that in the end, I'm going to make more money from the royalties, right? So um, if you're someone who isn't, <laughs> so sure and mm-hmm. you know the quality of your product then of course you don't want that out there of course not it's about building up your reputation and that's mm. like the number one thing when i think of you is mm. you've over time and time again with all the fake gurus out there all these people claiming to make great products you have time and time again everyone i've ever heard talk about you has mm. always been positive positive. and so reputation is like the most important thing in the web3 space and nfts now this is where we can go into the argument of 
can you have a reputation being an anonymous founder? I still think so. Whether I call you Iman or whether you're behind an avatar and you have a screen name, even if you like screw up under that screen name, it's going to take you forever. Of course, you can make another anonymous account, but it's going to take you a lot of like time to build up that reputation again. And so that's where I kind of stick with the Web3 culture, like Satoshi Nakamoto, who is that? No one knows the founder of Bitcoin. And mm -hmm. that's just ingrained in our culture. So like I have to respect it in a sense. Yeah. And so we are on the same page. Docs founders are by far what I prefer. I'm a docs founder. So mm -hmm. I, I get it. And you put your face to it. It's, it's a lot more easy to trust that person. But at the same time, you can still be a piece of shit as a docs founder and just yeah, lie to people's face. It's, it's a lot less likely. I understand what you're saying. 100%. About, I understand what likely. you're saying about the anonymous thing, but at the end of the day, our face is the one thing that we don't ever get to change, mm -hmm. right? So at the, you know, of course you can be anonymous and you could, you know, uh, get into the industry and you could end up making 50, a hundred million dollars. And if you're doxed and you run away with that money or you're you just, let's say you do something unethical, your face your your face gets carried with you everywhere, right? There's no running away from that. Whereas if you're doxed, uh, sorry, if you're if you're not doxed, I mean, and, and if you're not public, then eh, I made my fifty mil. There's still an opportunity I'm... cost in a sense, though. So you still have to, if you wanted to continue to build, yeah, you still have to build the reputation up. I mean, we saw this with Beanie. If you know who that, is. do you know who Beanie is? No. Okay, he's just some some big NFT influencer at the very beginning who worked with a lot of projects made over 8,000 ETH off his projects. Mm -hmm. And then somebody doxed him, had like a whole report, and he's allegedly a huge scammer, like huge background in person. And he got exposed for that. And now no one in the NFT space respects him. Mm -hmm. His tweets don't have the same pull. And so if he wanted to build that up again, it'd be very, very hard. Mm -hmm. And so it's very interesting. But besides the point, I do want to ask, if you think NFTs are a scam, why did you buy three board apes? Um, yeah. <laughs> Uh, how does i don't know it's it's hard to say without coming across like pretension because because i can like i don't, I don't it's know it's a status thing at the end of the day like i don't know like you know for me it's i could show people and i have i have youtube videos like showing people my 15 million dollar investment portfolio after tax at the age of 22 and like funnily enough in your industry or i could show people you know the you know a few days i'm collabing with a watch channel and we're you know i'm gonna have my three million dollar watch uh, collection in front of me and I could show people that. Um, and in other industries, they're like, wow, okay, that's, you know, a benchmark to go off of. But, it, you know, funnily enough, in the NFT industry, they're like, yeah, but you don't have an ape. So uh, <laughs> I was like, ah, you know, f*** it, I'll buy three. So <laughs> Three, can't be one. That's, um, that's a gachi. <laughs> so I, I don't know. You know, it's, um, I do think, I think NFTs are, are preposterous. Did I get $1.3 million worth of value from buying those no. three apes? Not in the slightest. I mm -hmm. mean, the funniest thing is, I'll tell you, I get into the Discord and um, and uh, was was a reveal bot or mm -hmm. you know the yeah yeah you, you know the one that actually lets you you know uh, pairs up with your MetaMask and verify you, yeah, yeah it verifies. It was down for three days. So I remember <laughs> I get it and one of the mods <laughs> was like, uh, yeah, I was like uh, they were like, oh, your reveal bot's down. I was like, like just as a joke, I was like, ah, uh, uh, like ah, uh, damn, you know, I I just bought three apes. It was, was, hoping, to, was, was hoping to join the boys, <laughs> yeah. and everyone in the free disco was like, don't worry, you're still one of us. Blah, blah. I was like, this is kind of funny, but um, yeah, you know, the, basically there's a there's a there's a side of every market mm -hmm. where it's like whether the watch market, the the car market, the art market, traditional art market, where it's like you evolved, like the people in there don't care about the price, mm -mm. right? And it's like. To, for some people, they're like, oh my God, $400,000 for one ape, blah, blah, blah. I think there's 6,400 unique holders, right? It's like to 6,400 people on earth, they do not care about a million dollars. It it doesn't even phase them, right? Um, so for me, you know, like it's buying the apes was just a, for me, it's a safe enough investment. Mm -hmm. I'm more concerned about the, and I know this probably will not, your audience will not like me for saying this, but like, <laughs> you know, I'm more concerned about, um, the doodles, the mm -hmm. zookies, mm -hmm. right? Like those, like more. I get it; they're still blue chip, but like the more the ones that are more stuck in the purgatory. To be proven, still. right? Like, board ape is like a cultural icon. Mm -hmm. Like, there's nothing that translates uh, into mainstream culture like board ape y'all club. Mm -hmm. And quite frankly, I love what they're doing. Right? Mm -hmm. um, I don't know. Was there a need for ape token? I don't know. That's a discussion for another day. Anonymous founders, though. Uh, I I swear they're not. They may have got doxxed by BuzzFeed, yeah, but no one knows. Like technically, it really? wasn't their choice. Really interesting. Mm -hmm. um, There's only two of them that got doxxed. Interesting. Well, look, <laughs> I, I I like the direction they're going because, as I said, for me, it's one of those where they could just 
they you know they have all that money uh, they could just run away um but i think they're building and i think that's they just bought the ip to crypto punks which was yeah, no, such I, a power move I like know, one realize. of the first of its kind seeing other projects like actually acquire other projects it's beautiful yeah. and it's only the beginning i think but i do have to say that this is like the actual there's two sides of the nft space that i think are 100 percent the future it's education letting consumers own digital content and st like maximizing status signaling mm. i know we talked about this this is what i described to most girls when they asked me about nfts it's like on instagram we always see people have a picture of a lambo or they have these watches and you don't know if they actually own it but mm. it looks like their life is lit and from the outside looking in you just believe it mm. but nfts are actually going to be able to have you display your physical assets digitally you're really into fashion same mm. thing you'll be able to literally like click on someone's profile if iman is on youtube you can click on his web3 wallet and you'll be able to see his whole watch collection you'll hit the watches folder and you'll be able to see oh you own this patek you own this rolex like you can see all three million dollar of your watches right there so instead of having to go see somebody in person mm. and say hey look at my watches you can just anytime you're interacting with someone online they'll be able to see your car your watches the clothes you own people will care more about owning the nft than the actual physical item that's I my vision that. maximize the status signaling so those are the two sides that i think are going to be the biggest impact outside of gaming but mm. that's for another day mm. no i could agree with that more um yeah i i think if you look year on year on year you know uh, just our culture is moving more and more towards status signaling and it's become more and more important in a digital world um you know sometimes i even look at like the whole metaverse stuff and i'm like that's insane and then i'm like and i'm still kind of making up my dis do i like it no not at all but you know i'm like i can't imagine a world like that but then i'm like i walk down the street and what's everyone doing and exactly like, you know like think about what life and even me when i'm in a car what am i doing like i'm on slack you know messaging back my team i'm you know on whatsapp i'm on instagram i'm you know here and there and um you know it's uh Things are moving in that direction, I think, whether we like it or not. This is one thing. It, it makes us more effective, but yeah. it's a discipline thing. I remember mm -hmm. looking at your Discord. You're in three channels. Like, you have a very good... You're very aware... All, that, all my companies. Yeah, the dopamine detoxes, yeah. the monk mode. Like, you're very, very disciplined on that. And I think that's what a lot of people overlook in life. Like, mm -hmm. all these social media platforms are just energy drains trying to get your attention. And they set people back. And so, mm -hmm. at least you've got that one figured out. And that's probably why a part of where you are and mm -hmm. at your age. So, but let's go ahead. Can I transition yep. into your project yeah okay sure so this is the most important thing that most people look past when they're making an nft project and that's like what their tactics are who they're attracting mm. and so the number one thing that i've liked about your project is you are so 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 intentional with who is going to be actually able to join your community because mm. i mean that's what board api club did so well they were the first like project to implement art with the community side and so i would love to hear from you without saying anything to bias anybody but what is the Gents Croquet Club to you? So Gents Croquet Club, so, you know, it's funny. I, I have a tattoo here and I think I, I showed you the other mm -hmm. day. And um, I got that tattoo back in uh, May of last year. Obviously, I only started working on the project mm -hmm. in December mm -hmm. of the year. Uh, so Gents Croquet Club was happening. With, like, the, it's been a thought in my mind uh, for years. Um, whether there was an NFT or not. This is yeah, whether there's an NFT or not. I wanted to do a, a members club for men specifically mm -hmm. uh and in it you know I, I know that might trigger some people but yet world of women is celebrated and it's amazing that <laughs> women a, are allowed in the a, club. yeah it's amazing that there's a women's community yeah. but oh my god there's a men's community that's shouldn't be no okay and for me the reason it's important whatever like everyone's got a sob story about blah, blah, this that never had a dad growing up like you know i was telling you the other day like just very simple things that i believe every man should learn how to tie a tie no one ever taught me that you know Simple things like I believe every man should know how to smoke a cigar properly or how to, you know, uh, know at least have a rudimentary understanding of wines and know how to dress and know how to um, simple like etiquette, you know. And so I always wanted that stuff along with all the stuff of like, you know, and once again, I understand that this is out of reach or like this is, um, uh, you know. I hope, you know, I know for some people this may not come across relatable, you know, just understand, mm -hmm. you know, I don't come from money, you know, I mean, that's why I built my business as single mom, you know, rough childhood, blah, blah, whatever, cry me river. But, <laughs> you know, you know, um, as you start to get more money, I'm sure, you know, even you two years ago, the thought that like you have an assistant, right? Just simple things like mm -hmm. as you start to make more money and you start to have new problems in your life, um, things like how do you find an assistant? How do you train an assistant? Like I always wanted like a, a members club where we could culminate all that and really high level men. Mm -hmm. And I'm not just talking about money. High level people mm -hmm. can come together and men can hold each other accountable. Um, 
so I always want that. I always thought I would have done that sort of like in my 40s and stuff like that. And basically, I was just waiting for the right moment. And when this whole, and when I finally clicked, I was like, okay, I want to start sort of a members club mastermind. And NFT is the perfect pricing model in my belief mm-hmm. for that. And it said at GYA, you know, we're, uh, you know, agency in three years, that's going to be the pricing model NFTs. Mm-hmm. The issue is right now I've got, I don't even remember the latest number. Uh, Tristan, was it like? 15 employees, 16 employees. Growing, we hired four new last month. You know, so like I have 15, 16 employees, $1.2 million a year in staff costs before any bonuses, anything like that, uh, any per- per- performance incentives. Um, and, you know, a business that's, you know, doing five, $6 million uh, or will do this year in revenue. So I can't necessarily just halt everything and just mm-hmm. move straight to NFT. Right. So I thought about the fact that I want to start this members club. Uh, this members club mastermind and the NFT is the perfect way in order to price that. And that's basically how Gentry K Club was formed. This is perfectly in line with what we were talking about earlier, mm-hmm. how it's just a business, something you wanted to do mm-hmm. and NFTs actually come in and make it frictionless in mm-hmm. a sense. It's actually lets the people that join your club see if they like it. And if not, at least they can just sell it and get their investment back out. Exactly. But you're trying to attract high net worth people and you're mm-hmm. trying to build a foundation of people that want to lift each other up and maybe help them in any aspect of their life that they're struggling with because they might not have that person in person. And so yeah, we're, we're, and we're very unapologetic about that. You know, um, we are the first and like, let that sink in. And by the way, you know, <laughs> by the way, you, you know, when I first told you about that and as I said, I mean, I love the fact that, you know, the first time we chatted about this, you know, a few months ago, um, you were definitely playing devil's advocate mm-hmm. um, and hold, you know, sort of reserving your opinion on what you actually thought that I was doing, mm-hmm. but it, it definitely gave me a lot of insight and, um, you know, especially a lot of stuff when it comes to tokenomics, I have mm-hmm. you to thank for, um, you know, our su- the supply shock that we've caused with the amount of demand that we have compared to what we have uh, is insane. Um, but yeah, as I was saying, you know, we are the first NFT project ever to demand that you're fully doxxed. And the other day we had the highest earn, you know, and we don't care. Like we, will, you're going to sell us on why you should get yeah. into the project. We've had... We have people in there it, just in our free Discord right now. Uh, and by the way, the only way you can get into free Discord is by doing a discovery call. Mm-hmm. And we say, you know, if your video is not on, we're like, look, you could, we'll still take the call. You have five percent chance of ever getting whitelist, no matter how good you are. The other day, we had the highest earning um, uh, 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 esports player in history. I think I told you this yeah. uh, 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 over a cigar the other day. We had the highest earning uh, gamer in history, like competitive gamer, mm-hmm. uh, and he wouldn't turn on his video camera. He hasn't gone whitelist. And I was adamantly against this, Mm -hmm. like almost to a fault the first time we talked, like it like broke my brain. Like, no, that's not allowed. You have to let people be anonymous. But as times have developed, as we've gotten to know each other, I understand your point of view more. And that foundation is the most important part. I get it. So it does make sense. And I do think that because you're not forcing anybody to join, you're not forcing them to dox. But if they want to be a part of this like elite club of high net worth individuals, you're going to have the docs so we can prove that. And I think that's completely okay as long as you have that explanation. 100%. And yeah, you know, they take a 15-minute discovery call where, you know, we run them through uh, a little bit about the project. We only have, you can, uh, there's two things. You can either mint one or you can mint five and you can't mm-hmm. mint in between. And even though I guarantee you right now, we can make millions and millions and millions more letting mm-hmm. people do that. Why would I ever let someone mint three? Mm-hmm. It's because they want to keep one for themselves and they want to flip two. Every, there, look, I, I, who knows what the floor, floor price will do? Who knows who sells in this and that? But there has never been, le- in a project ever, less sell pressure, mm-hmm. right? Because everyone in here, for the most part, like, you know, obviously we, we have so much data on our audience uh, because <laughs> we take all these calls and they have to go, you know, run, uh, go through these hoops to get access to the free Discord. Doesn't mean they're going to get whitelist at all. Mm-hmm. Um so, you know, we know that our audience at the moment, last time I checked, was something like 62, 64% business owners, right? So we have traditional wow. Web 2 people in so many different industries that are coming in. And I said, Web 3 is just really the gatekeeping process, right? When you join Gents Croquet Club, obviously, it's a mastermind, it's a members club. But outside of that, everything's hosted on a custom platform, right? So at the moment right now, we're building a custom platform. You log in, you know, let's say, for example, my e-learning platform where, you know, I spent over a million dollars to build a custom platform for my customers last year. You know, with that, there's no password. You know, we use a a OTP Mm one-time password. You put in your email, you get a one-time password every single time, right? And that's the way we do it. 
With Gents Go K Club, you log into the vault, and mm -hmm. the vault is where all of the bonus programs are held. And you know, at the moment, we've got five, six, hour, uh, you know, five, six programs. Uh, everything from you know a three, four hour uh, course that I recorded mm -hmm. on exactly how I built a three million dollar watch collection. By the way, with only putting in one something like one point six, so I made one point four million dollars oh, by yeah. wearing expensive watches. Right? Beautiful stuff like that. Exactly how I was able to make eight million dollars last year through crypto. Um, and having a three, four hour course on that, as well as a bunch of other stuff. And we're going to be adding stuff, three or four courses a year in there to our holders. And as I said, uh, I'm finding the best cigar sommeliers on earth. And, you know, just, you know, uh, you know, other day we were having a cigar, right? And you're like, how do I smoke properly in this? Mm -hmm. And that was dude, the first time I ever smoked a cigar. And that's even me with wine. Like, mm -hmm. you know, if I didn't have my business partner at my software company, he's Swiss and, you mm -hmm. know, uh, very big fan yeah, of wine. And he put you on. Right. And he's the one who taught me, mm -hmm. okay, how do I not embarrass myself when I'm trying to, you know, when I'm on a date and I'm mm -hmm. trying to decide what <laughs> yeah. wine do we choose, yeah. right? Uh, and correct, teach me correct etiquette. So uh, the the vault is where all of this stuff is mm -hmm. hosted. Um, and then in uh, inside of there, we also have our crypto and NFT reports. There's mm -hmm. multiple of those a week. So those are hosted in there. Uh, there's a meetup function. So that way we're trying to take as many people offline and have and get them to have real online interactions. Um, so all of that is hosted in there and it's already started. I mean, there's so many people in GCC that, I mean, I was telling you the other day, it's crazy stories of like, uh, there's gym owners mm -hmm. where they're saying anyone who's a GCC member and can prove it, they don't have to pay membership. Uh, there's restaurant owners who's like anyone who's a GCC member. If you come to us, drinks is on us. We've had, I probably shouldn't say this, but we have someone who works at Mercedes and you know how mm -hmm. extremely difficult it is mm -hmm. to get some of the models there. For example, you know, uh, G63s are going way over sticker price. Uh, someone who works at Mercedes who has said, look, whatever GCC needs in terms of getting special access to vehicles, I got you covered. So, you know, our network is just in insane. Um, and, you know, GCC and, and the NFT component to it is the way that you access all of that. This is what I talk about my channel a lot, signaling intentions. Mm. And this goes perfectly in hand with like your foundation that you're building. Every decision you're making eliminates flippers, eliminates short-term thinkers, mm. eliminates people that just want to make money off your work because you're trying to attract high level people. But once they have that camaraderie, they join, everybody just wants to help each other because they feel like they're a part of something that's bigger than themselves. Mm -hmm. And so if you have a group of high net worth individuals, of course, you're going to get high net worth individuals that have all these pull, all these connections in the businesses that they run or they're connected to looking out for each other. Mm -hmm. and it's like, like an internet fraternity of like top level people. And it's the coolest thing to me. And so I love that you did your research. You're not rushing into this. You could have dropped this at the hype, most hype moment when it was rushed. But I think we're probably dropping at the worst time. <laughs> yeah, possibly. Like, I mean, the market's not looking the best. But I mean, again, you're going after the people that I don't think the money is going to be too big of an issue. I mean, right? we've, we've said from the get go, um, we're not looking for NFT people. <laughs> you know, I, again, I, I don't know. Should I say? Okay. So we have a scoring system. There's like a full equation. And uh, uh, I mentioned in one of my videos, I think if someone, uh, I think if someone was to, uh, if it was to leak, they could probably sell, you know, the, the knowledge for thousands of dollars because it's basically like, how do you, uh, how do you get accepted? You know, yesterday I was actually, um, uh, I was actually having dinner uh, with a, a, a YouTuber, very successful YouTuber, very successful business owner. And he's like, dude, like, how do I get, like, can you tell me how to pass the application process? And I'm like, dude, I'm not going to tell you, but also like you're a friend of mine, you know, yeah. like if, because I've had friends of mine who have been like taking the call. I, I can show you my text messages. I have hundreds of friends actually who are like, bro, it's been a few weeks. Like, is there anything you can do? Like getting me whitelisted, blah, blah. Uh, and these are personal friends of mine, very, very successful people. So it's, man, it's ruthless. Um, I mean, someone paid $500 just to get, try to get a call. Yeah, that was insane. Which was crazy. That, that was early days. Like our calendar was packed for weeks and weeks. And that was like, I, because we were obviously, right now we have a team of 14 people who take calls, mm -hmm. 14 gatekeepers. Like, oh my God. Yeah, we have to take a lot of calls, man. <laughs> They're booked out for over a month right now too. Yeah, dude, it's very intense. Right? <laughs> so so um, especially when we first started, like I um, I couldn't get too many calls on the calendar. I needed to be safe. Of course. Um, so what's it called? So uh, I didn't really announce it publicly. All I did was just change my profile picture on Instagram to Jens K Club. I put it in my bio and I, I remember... I put on my story. I just went, -ha 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 -ha. <laughs> and that's all. And I knew people would see that and be like, oh, he changed his profile picture because I don't really change my profile mm -hmm. picture that much. And that got us like 400 calls like that same day. Right. And that packed us up. You know, we didn't have as many gatekeepers as we do mm -hmm. now. So that packed us out for a week. So this guy who's actually, um, I th yeah, I think I can say this. He's one of the biggest masterminds out there right now. Mm -hmm. He is their head researcher. Um, so he basically told someone, he's like, hey, I'll pay you $500. He told his uh, community, he's like, I'll pay you $500 
for anyone who can give me a call a space on the calendar so that's why i said we had the recording uh he got in and we had to change his like he told pete my co-founder because he was still taking the early calls um and people was like yeah that's fine but i guess we're just gonna have to change the credentials from yeah. the calendly um so yeah it's, it's been crazy man and how you doing oh good man how are you can't complain can't complain yeah awesome yeah thanks for um getting on the phone i've actually i don't know if you noticed but i've swapped for another guy so i actually um i, was, I paid him for the call so i <laughs> hope that's all good you paid him for the call yeah uh 500 bucks why? Because the calendar was fully booked. Because when the when you guys first posted it, I just thought, "Fuck, there's going to be no times." Um, and so I, I I run a group with um, crypto investing. And I just said to all my guys, "Like, look, I don't think I'm going to be able to get a call. Like, this is so high demand. If one of you guys get it, I'll pay you 500 bucks. Like, that's how that's how bullish I am. So I just, yeah, I don't know." <laughs> Nice to hear, bro. Nice to hear. Okay, cool. Well, then we, we're just going to have to swap out all of your information. See, that's something that, again, I, most people won't be able to replicate either. Like, mm -hmm. that comes with the reputation, what you've done, your track record, and what you've built. I will say, I do want to put a formal request into the vault for a fashion course so yeah we're gonna have that's, that in that's too. gonna be a must because yeah. you got that part figured out and it's <laughs> something I, I i struggle with so dude yesterday you were you were looking slick because of you i got yesterday, i got the first hand advice we, we, we were having drinks with some uh ladies <laughs> yesterday and, and brent was there he was wearing white jeans he was wearing laura piana he was wearing he was <laughs> i swap. feel like a new man because of you. so <laughs> the gents croquet club's already paying dividends <laughs> So guys, Iman was kind enough to actually give us 200 call spots. Now, those aren't guaranteed mints, but if you are someone who is comfortable with a higher ticket NFT, around $4,500 is the ticket price for this project. And so if that's more than your monthly income, probably not the project for you. And honestly, this is only 200 call spots. These spots aren't guaranteed. So you are going to have to dox. You are going to have to share your story. And if that's not something you're comfortable with, probably stray away. But if you are interested in joining the Jens Croquet Club, he actually gave me a special link and that'll be the first link in the description below. Watch the VSL. It's about 20 minutes long. Highly recommend it. You'll learn so, so much more than we actually had time to go in depth on about in this video. So highly recommend go watching that. But other than that, Iman, thank you so much for coming on, my guy. I appreciate all the opportunities you give me my audience. Appreciate everything you've taught me. I look, I'm feeling confident now and I'm in the London <laughs> drip. So my man, man it's great to actually get you, meet you face to face. Yeah, it's been a pleasure. Thanks for coming out to London for uh, me to have the opportunity to show you uh, a bit about my city and uh, I'm looking forward to flying out to the States and for you to host me next. We'll show you how we do it stateside, my friend. <laughs> I like that. All right, cheers.